I bet that title got your attention. That's right, today we're doing the Garbage Pail Kids cartoon. You may know this franchise for producing one of the worst movies ever made. It started out as a trading card game, a parody of the Cabbage Patch Kids. But I'm assuming that you know this. The card game wasn't anything like, say, Magic, where there was some kind of backstory going on. The cards pretty much had the characters and nothing else. Now, this is not as bad as the movie. I don't think anything really could be. But that's because this cartoon has other problems. The cards were aimed at older kids and teenagers, but being a cartoon in the 1980s meant that you had to dumb it down as much as possible, cut out anything closely resembling violence or gross out, and make it as insulting to the target audience as possible. So the moral guardians shall be pleased. The closest relative to this show is Madball's gross jokes, and I'm beginning to feel that every cartoon I'll be reviewing from the 1980s is high on unadulterated weirdness and lack of story. Good morning, children. I am here to tell you about the Garbage Pail Kids show. Oh, this is going to be awesome. I can tell. It's disgusting, obnoxious, and worst of all, gross. Is this supposed to be me? Did somebody build a time machine and try to make a parody of me? I think it's terrible that they would put something like this on TV. Don't you? Good. I'm glad you agree. Now, change the channel. Well, joke's on you, because after the pilot episode, this cartoon was banned in the United States. And I have no idea why. I I'm not even joking. Despite what she says, the show isn't really gross at all. It's stupid nonsense with no real plot, and it's essentially a 22-minute toy commercial, but that's like 90% of all 80s cartoon series. Theme song time! I thought people couldn't find a way to make theme songs even lazier. This show managed to prove me wrong. They found a way to make theme songs lazier. What's the matter? Were lyrics too expensive for you to write? If you want an instrumental theme song, just have an instrumental theme song. You don't need a guy singing these off-key belches. And just, what the fuck is going on on my screen? This tells me literally nothing about the show, in any sort of the word. There really is no excuse for this. Mostly because the theme song came out in the 1980s. Think of some of the others 80s theme songs. Take Mask, for instance. It's another show fueled on 80s nonsense, made to sell toys, but it made sense in its own world. And it was good 80s nonsense. This theme song was able to tell you what the show was about, and it sounded awesome while doing it. You know, it sounds like people actually wanted to be involved with it. From this theme song, can you tell anything about the show? Watching this, what do you know about the Garbage Pail Kids? Either their cards, the movie, or this TV show. Actually, to be totally honest with you, I don't think the show itself knows what the show is supposed to be about. Because the first episode, the very first episode, uses none of the main characters. It doesn't use any of the show's concepts. It takes place in an entirely different universe to that of the rest of the show. I'm not even kidding. The best comparison I can have is if the pilot of Dexter's Lab was an episode of Dial M for Monkey. It starts with the most grating music cue I've ever heard. A man in a garbage can zaps the theater, which changes the movie playing. And the usher takes off his face, revealing a smiley face below it. And we start off with a movie parody that has nothing to do with anything. Aliens fly around space looking for a place to party. This galaxy's nowheresville. Hey, I heard about this hot new planet. Okay, we have a cartoon from the 80s, based on a product from the 80s, using slang from the 60s. It's called Earth. Great trash heaps, good smog, it's tops! Oh, I see, we moved from 60s slang to 50s slang. The original Scooby-Doo wouldn't use that word because it's so outdated. So the aliens land on Earth, which is one giant garbage pail for some reason. So a pilot is told to blast the alien UFO with a missile that's alive for some reason. It flies through the UFO not hitting anything because it doesn't want to, and goes crashing down into the beach, which the UFO follows. I'm afraid I don't see the joke here. 
Why would anyone in any universe, even in a universe built on unadulterated, childish, stupid bullshit, make a missile alive and have its own opinions? The aliens begin to have a picnic and then the show steals Beat It. I'm not even kidding. They straight up stole the song with very little changes. Army ants escape their picnic and begin conquering the Earth. And what the fuck does this have to do with the Garbage Pail Kids? As far as I can tell, this stars none of the characters from the show. Every character not from the 1950s sounds like they're voiced by the same actor. Tanks shoot slime at army ants and it makes them grow bigger. I thought the show was written for three-year-olds, not by three-year-olds. Now hear this, all hands on the forward deck. What? What the fuck? A lot of 80s shows don't make a whole lot of sense if you think about them for like more than a minute. But at least they retain some kind of sense within their own universe. That's what I expect from you Garbage Bell Kids. There's an art to throwing 80s randomness on the screen and you have a long way to go before you master it. The aliens only leave when they hear that aliens are invading the earth on the radio. We cut to a baby newscaster. I, I, I don't get it. Does this take place in the same universe as the army ants and the aliens? You know, the one that had adults doing their job and running around? Is this about some kids playing a game? That's the closest thing I can think of, but they never establish that if that's what they're trying to do. And he's literally crying that army ants are still there eating everything. Remember how before when slime made the ants grow bigger? Yeah, they decided to do that again. And now no aliens want to visit Earth because they've got an ants problem. I don't normally do this, but because this episode had literally nothing to do with the show that it's a part of, I'm going to take on the rest of this 22 minute block. But first we have a segment with a toy salesman. He sells toys like someone who sells used cars, and he talks like an auctioneer. The joke is that the toys are used. Besides the toys being used, there are no other jokes. Actually, what am I, what am I talking about? Even including the toys being used, there are no jokes. Used toys are not a joke. It's just a guy with a motor mouth for about a minute and a half. And now, for another exciting installment of... Would we lie to you? Yes, next segment. Okay, I will give credit where credit is due. This segment actually comes the closest to representing the source material. In terms of the show, this means that it's gross and unpleasant to look at with no real plot. And it hammers it even further of how bad an idea this whole cartoon was. And now, finally, we get to the actual episode of the Garbage Pail Kids, batteries not included. We start with two kids putting batteries into a stuffed animal. It short circuits. The boys put batteries into their toy car and it goes crazy and destroys everything. Then someone in a garbage pail tells them that their leader, I guess, are waiting for them down at the command center. So these five kids head to the control center. Also, you'll notice that in this segment, the lip syncing is really out of sync. And now, here's Trash Can Ken! They attack the engine through the fuel, the body through the food. Attack? What attack? I don't know why, because it was fine in all of the other segments, and what you're seeing is a part of the same file. It ends up getting to be very distracting. Then we see the Garbage Pail Kids suit up, I guess. My god, that's a lame-ass transformation. Honestly, I'd feel pretty ripped off if the only thing that happened to me was my face slid down on my hand. H how is that gross, by the way? The whole point of the Garbage Pail Kids is being gross. The garbage person gives them a guy named Doug disguised as a hot dog. I I I don't get it. Using the riddle that their leader gave for no reason, I mean, why the hell didn't he just give them the actual answer? They decipher that this plot has something to do with batteries. And I just want to point out that this show never explains where the Garbage Pail Kids came from or how they got their powers. I mean, in the next scene, it shows that everyone is disgusted by them. It makes it seem like their Garbage Pail form has some drawbacks that would make investigation kind of difficult. For the most part, if they just stayed in their normal human form, this plot would be much, much easier for them. Hello. Hello! Stay away from them, it might be catching! Ooh. Yes, young one, we must mock and avoid the sick and ugly people. Besides the child, the owner of the toy store doesn't seem to mind the Garbage Pail Kids. Dear, that is terrible! I was suspicious when the man from the battery company gave them to me for free. Where is this company? 
Hmm. Seriously, the lip syncing. Just add a pause at the beginning. It only has to be a second or two, and then the rest of the episode will actually match what the characters are saying. It's a simple thing to fix. The toy store owner leads them to a factory with a security guard who won't let them go inside. So some guy who's been watching these kids through binoculars while hiding in a bush tells some other grown adults who have an interest in these kids. He tells them exactly where he expects them to be and when so they can all confront the kids. The only time they made this show creepy is when they weren't trying to. Weird. So the kids break into the factory and it appears to be a mattress factory. Do not remove under penalty of death. Wow, how did they, how'd they sneak that into the show? I mean, until only recently, it seems that even if shows were talking about death, they'd never actually use the word death. It was like some kind of super bad swear word. I mean, to put this in perspective, the original Teen Titans didn't use the word death. The Powerpuff Girls didn't use the word death, and they used the word shit. I guess nowadays we just have a better understanding that even if we don't have words for things, it doesn't mean those things will go away. The villains follow the kids into the factory with a machine that intends to clean them up. That might just be a euphemism, or it might entirely be the objective. The Garbage Pail Kids, who don't have any superpowers beyond looking slightly uncanny, get kidnapped. Release my pals, you foul, fun-busting no, he doesn't swear in the show. I, I just had to, though. Because it makes you think that there'd actually be something in the show worth of getting banned over. This show is utter nonsense. It is a 22-minute toy commercial. But there were a lot of shows like this at the time. And half of this doesn't even have anything to do with the toys. Did it deserve to get banned? You know who you're asking, right? I've seen so many worse put-together shows and much more foul, hate-filled, daring-to-be-offensive trash that it makes it cute that anyone would just call this gross. So the remaining two Garbage Pail Kids run to their home base, while the others are thrown in a dungeon because reasons. It's here that they learn that the bad guys are making bad batteries to destroy most of the toys in America. This show came out in 1987. Back then, weren't the most popular toys like other dolls and action figures that didn't require batteries at all? Even today, not every toy requires batteries. And just to hammer the point further, the Garbage Pail Kids, the trading cards, you know, what the show is based on, do not require batteries. The hot dog person, who was sitting in the kid's back pocket, comes out angrily. They have him sneak out. And then we see the dog that the people were using to track down the Garbage Pail Kids. Like, two feet behind them. How blind do you have to be to not notice something bigger than you, following you, and moving as fast as you are? I mean, at that range, you could probably see its shadow, hear its health, feel its breath. The hot dog leads the dog away, and is able to reveal that the other kids are being held in the power station. So, all in all, th having that dog there was entirely useless to this plot. So the Garbage Pail Kids break into the power plant, and they destroy everything! Be because in a show that panders to boys, we've got to have that be the solution! Th you haven't heard the last of us! Does that voice sound familiar to you? Yes, very. Mr. Killjoy, the toy store owner. I should have known. He wasn't grossed out when he saw us. That little girl. I'm sure she's an evil mastermind, too. Never trust an adult who isn't grossed out by a garbage pailer. Never trust someone who doesn't hate us based on our appearance. Good lesson for the kids. And we have a final segment about a bully. He beats up a bunch of people, and then he beats up himself because there's no one left to bully. What's the joke? I don't know. I don't get it. This is the most useless garbage that I've seen in quite some time. And I'm done. Thank you.